What's going on guys, Billy here, and the other day we got a firmware update for the Skydio 2 that included a pretty extensive list of changes. Now this version is 6.0.38 and it was pushed out by Skydio on April 3rd, 2020. Now it's 868.3 megabytes in size to download for iOS devices, but I noticed it was a little bit larger on Android devices at 911 megabytes in size to download. Now it's also accompanied by a Skydio app update for both iOS and Android, so be sure to look for that on your respective device. Now, as I already mentioned, there is an extensive list of changes that make up these patch notes. Some are smaller bug fixes, while others aim to improve the core functions of the Skydio 2. You know, I'm always really excited to make these firmware update videos, and in my opinion, they're some of the best video topics to cover, just because we get to see the progression and the transformation of a drone over time. We get to see all the features added, we get to see all of the bugs fixed, and you'd think that with an update like this that includes, I think, around 14 different patch notes, 14 different things addressed with this drone that this would be a fairly extensive video although after flying this drone almost all day first on the old firmware and then on the new firmware I can say that at least on the surface level I don't see many changes this still feels like the same Skydio 2 on that old firmware and I'm kind of left scratching my head that despite all of these changes and all of these fixes that we got what actually changed between the old and the new firmware. Now, before we get into things, I do just wanna mention that this video is kind of gonna be broken up into two different sections, just like the patch notes are broken up into two different sections. So first of all, we'll go over all the bug fixes, and then after that, we'll go over some of the different features added and some of the different features that have been tweaked. All right, so starting things off with that first list, the different bug fixes that Skydio has implemented within this firmware update and this app update. The first is a fix for pre-flight camera error V17, that was preventing a small number of customers from being able to fly. Now, I can say that I've received this error in the past. I think that it was more towards the beginning of my ownership of this drone. So it was during the first weeks that I had received the drone and I was flying it around. Although recently, I haven't gotten that error. Now, the way that I got around it in the past was just by restarting the drone, but it's good to see that they're implementing a fix for this error because it definitely was annoying having to restart the drone and not knowing if I was gonna have to try and fumble with it to make it actually work. Now, just on a side note to kind of go off on a tangent here, this drone is very temperamental, and I hope that Skydio can kind of release some of the restrictions or ease back on the restrictions in the future. So just for example, right, this error is something that maybe you'd still be able to fly with, but just because those sensors and the different cameras on the drone aren't happy and they have an error, you're not able to put the drone up. Some other things, just for an example, you're not able to fly if you don't have an SD card inserted in the drone. Um, you can't fly if there's low light. So if you're kind of trying to fly at dusk and the cameras can't see, well, you can't fly. And also also, just earlier today when I tried to update this firmware with my phone, it said I wasn't able to fly if I didn't have over 500 megabytes of free space on my device. That really doesn't make sense, but hey, this drone is very temperamental and it's kind of something that you just got to deal with. Moving on down the list here, the next fix was issued for a bug with the flight logs that was preventing them from being removed from the phone, leading to bloated app sizes, which is great, right? I don't want the Skydio 2 app to take up gigabytes on my phone just because of the stored flight logs. But here's a good idea for Skydio. Why don't you make these flight logs available for us to view through the application? I know that I'm not alone when I say that there is a lot of features missing from this drone, and one of them is the flight logs. I feel like this is a core function of any drone. And for some people, like agencies, like law enforcement that want to fly drones, these flight logs might be mandatory, and it stops them from buying such a great drone like the Skydio 2 that delivers such great autonomy because you're not able to look at the flight logs. So look, whether or not they give you some sort of separate app to look at the flight logs, whether or not they build it right into the Skydio 2 app itself, that would probably be the better route to go. We need the ability to view these flight logs because it's something that I like to do whenever I fly my drone to see the stats on my drone, like how far I've flown, um, my top speed, things like that, but also to assess each of my flights to make sure that everything is going properly. Now, these final four bug fixes issued by Skydio in this firmware update, I would say are relatively small compared to those first two. The first of which is that it fixed an issue with the gimbal not pitching down completely. I can say I've never experienced this issue. In fact, when I'm flying my drone mostly, the gimbal is about at like 45 degrees pitched downwards just because it's following me around. It's never usually pitched straight downwards. Um, let's see. It also fixed an issue of the camera fees freezing in DNG mode. I can say that I use this drone 95% of the time shooting video. I barely shoot photos with it, but hey, if you're a photographer out there and use you use this drone specifically for photos, let me know if you encountered that issue because I can only imagine how frustrating that would be. Um, 
Now, this is actually something that's fairly large, a ground height estimation fix. So the way that this drone flies around and it uses that height floor feature is that it determines how high it is off of the ground. And when you're going on changing terrain, this drone is always going to have to adjust its altitude up and down. Now, this height floor function and this height floor feature is a safety feature built into the drone so that when it's flying around, it doesn't collide with lower objects or people surrounding you. So the fact that they're fixing the estimation of the ground height is a good thing because if this drone accidentally went below eight feet, and got into some sort of accident that could potentially harm somebody, that wouldn't be good. So it's good that they're fixing this on the back end. Um, finally, on here, it says that there is numerous other bug fixes and stability improvements. So there's probably some other smaller things addressed in this update. Now up on the screen right now is the rest of the things that we are going to cover in this Skydio 2 firmware update. They are improvements. Uh, I, I know you guys can't see me right now, but they are improvements with air quotes around improvements because as I said in the beginning, even though we have this extensive list of things that were improved, like the landing performance, the augmented reality, the, re the return to launch, I didn't notice any difference. In fact, I might have seen some steps taken in the wrong direction backwards, but we'll get to those as they come. The first thing we have on this list here is improved landing performance. And here's a gripe that I have with a lot of these drone manufacturers that put their patch notes out there for us to see. I wish they were a little bit more specific. Like, what did they do to improve the landing performance? I could be looking at something totally wrong. I landed this drone on that first firmware version, the older firmware version, and it came down, it kind of bounced up and down once it hit the ground, but once I updated to the new firmware version, there was basically no change whatsoever. In fact, I think it looked exactly the same. Now, if I wanted them to go ahead and improve the landing performance, I'd want them to not make the drone come down so hard. I feel like in the long term, it could kind of be detrimental to the gimbal. It could cause some issues down the line. Um, but in terms of the landing performance, I see virtually no change from the old firmware to the, to the new firmware. And it kind of has me scratching my head. What did Skydio do to actually improve the landing performance. Now let's work our way a little bit further down this list. So we have eight different features and things that were improved on this drone. The first of which was the improved landing performance, but the next is a performance improvement to the augmented reality system built into the Skydio 2. Now in my short time of flying today, I really didn't notice any change. The augmented reality built into this drone allows you to track certain subjects. So it identifies subjects in the frame when the drone is hovering there that it might want to follow, like maybe a car or maybe a person. So the fact that they improved this is definitely good. Maybe this drone will now have a better uh, time that I guess flying around and trying to find a subject that it wants to track. I know sometimes that it hunts around because it can't find a subject, but hopefully now it can lock onto a subject a little bit easier. Although in my short time of flying, I really didn't see any massive improvements. Moving down here, the next thing we have, the third thing addressed on this list is an improved performance between the iPhone and the controller accessory. Now, when I initially read this, I thought it was an improvement between the iPhone and controller accessory to the Skydio 2 itself. So I took the drone out, I did some range tests, I did some, I guess, performance tests in terms of like the single strength coming back to the drone. Although I guess I read this wrong and it's actually an improvement between the iPhone itself and the controller itself. Now I figured I wouldn't let my time and that footage go to waste and I'd show you guys a range test kind of comparing the older firmware to the newer firmware to see what we're up against. Now I do want to preface this with saying that I am in a more urban area. It is pretty heavily populated here. I'm flying over the water but there is a lot of interference coming from either side of that water so I just want to put that out there before we begin talking about this. Uh, so anyway on that older firmware version I ended up getting to about 1.35 miles before the signal dropped out and I still had control over the drone but the telemetry was kind of lagging. It wasn't as responsive. So I figured, okay, this is going to be my point where I turn around. So I got about 1.35 miles. I might've been able to push it a little bit further, but just to be safe. I turned around. Now, when I updated to the new firmware version, I noticed I only got about 1.19 miles, which is definitely significantly less than what I got with the older firmware version. But there's something interesting to point out regarding that empty transmission feed or the no transmission feed rather than just display a black screen. And now kind of shows a fuzzy screen. And I actually, like this change because it lets me know that, okay, I've lost transmission and the camera isn't just going black for some other reason. This is a direct representation of something happening on the drone. And I think that it's actually a step in the right direction. What I think is a step in the wrong direction is the fact that up in the telemetry section, they're now displaying the range, or I guess the distance in feet 
rather than in miles. So now instead of seeing like 1.3 or 1.19 miles, we're seeing 6,379 feet. So that then makes me have to do a conversion from feet to miles. I wish they left it the same and just kept it as miles, but hey, to each their own. Now look, at the end of the day, the Skydio was not built with range in mind, and the fact that out of a Wi-Fi transmission system, you can get over a mile, in my opinion, is a good thing. So while you can't go flying distances like you can with the Mavic 2 Pro, out like seven miles with OcuSync 2, this drone still does a pretty good job over its Wi-Fi transmission system. Now getting into what this update actually addresses, it is the performance between the controller accessory itself and the iPhone, which I've got somewhere. So when you plug the iPhone into the controller, it now gives you a more reliable experience. And I can say that this is definitely a welcome change. In my beginning times flying this drone manually, I was always wondering if I was actually gonna be able to connect to the drone or if I'd experience some issue. But now the connection is much more fast and much more reliable. So for that, I definitely thank Skydio for addressing the issue. So moving down to the fourth improvement on our list here, it says that Skydio improved the gimbal smoothing and they fixed a rare jello producing movement with the Skydio 2. Now, personally, I can say I've never really experienced any gimbal issues with this drone. It's always been rock solid for me, although I have seen some people saying that the horizon is way off with this drone, and I guess I just haven't really noticed it because I've got the drone following me most of the time at a lower altitude, and it's kind of got the gimbal pitched downwards, so if that gimbal is kind of tilting from left to right, I really don't notice it all that much. Now, in that first flight on the old firmware version when I did my range test, I can say that the horizon was a little bit off, like it was favoring one side over the other, and when we fast forward to the newer firmware version, that horizon is dead on. Now, this is definitely a good fix implemented by Skydio, but I wish that on the back end, we had a little bit more control over the gimbal to change the tilt if we have to, if the drone is kind of favoring one side, we can just automatically or manually adjust it rather than have to wait for the drone to kind of center itself. Let's see, let's move on down to the next one. It says that they improved performance on Android and iOS. Uh, the app already runs really great. In my opinion, I haven't really noticed many issues aside from that V17 error we covered in the beginning and all of the little kind of quirky features of this drone. Like it doesn't let you fly if you don't meet these certain requirements. But other than that, I think that these are just general iOS and Android improvements, performance improvements for their app. All right, so moving on down to the sixth thing on our list here, we have got improved RTL performance. RTL stands for return to launch. If you're familiar with like a DJI drone, this is essentially return to home so the drone automatically returns back to its launch point. And let me just say that return to launch is a flawed feature. This is such a core functionality of any drone. It's a safety feature in my opinion, and it just flat out does not work that well on the Skydio 2. I don't trust it. It doesn't feel reliable, and I'm honestly afraid to use it. So let me set out the scene for you guys. I flew out on the new firmware version out to 6,300 feet. That's about 1.2, 1.19 miles. And when I tried to hit the return to launch button, uh, it didn't work. It just still sat there and it hovered. And I knew I was connected to the drone because I continued to see some changes on the map. And I also saw the telemetry go up and down as the drone kind of hovered around. The drone would not return to the launch point. After about five or 10 times, trying, the drone finally engaged its RTL, but then as the drone began to come back to me, I noticed it would not restore its video connection. I couldn't see what the drone was seeing. I could only look at the map and see its course flying back to me. Now, of course, this drone is autonomous. I really wasn't worried about it crashing into anything, but still like in the back of my mind, not being able to see where the drone was flying was a little bit uneasy. Now, I also noticed the drone kind of swayed back and forth. It didn't fly in a direct path back to me. And also when the drone was flying back to me, it was flying backwards. Now, okay, I was kind of facing the other way as I flew down the river. So maybe it just came back to me in a straight path. It didn't bother spinning around, but I also engaged return to launch a little bit later in my flight with the drone facing directly towards the way I was flying. And it went out of its way to spin around and fly to me backwards. At the end of the day, the biggest factor that really determines my relationship with a drone, as weird as that sounds, is trust. I trust every single DJI drone to do the right thing. I trust it's going to pick up obstacles. I trust it's going to return to home properly. I trust that it's not just gonna come falling from the sky or 
dive into the water like the Skydio 2 did. Trust is so massive with these unmanned vehicles, these unmanned aircraft, and I don't have much trust in Skydio 2's return to launch. So look, until that trust is built up, maybe I need to use it a little bit more, but from what I've seen right now, I really just don't trust it. Now we've got two final things to discuss here on this list. They're very small. First of all, now you can download clips from your drone directly with the remote controller. So over the air, you don't have to plug into the drone anymore. That was a huge pain. And also you can now see the battery icon. You can see the charging status of the drone when it's plugged in, which I don't understand why this drone turns on when you charge it, but hey, that's been something I've been complaining. That's something I've been complaining about since day one. And that's, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this firmware update. Uh, definitely don't really know how to go about this one because I thought it'd be something massive, but instead we're left with an update that doesn't really do much. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.